Right, welcome back to today's episode of Wizbits Random Gaming. Heading off today to the London gaming market. Slightly out of breath, as always with myself, running slightly late. Thank you London Underground for messing the trains up. Um, my fault. Should have double checked before I left the house. <sighs> Nearly there anyway. Got myself an early bird ticket today. Ironic, eh? Considering I'm not going to be early. But yeah, let's see what I can pick up. See you inside. Right, so here we are inside. And this is only my second London gaming market. And the first one, I really enjoyed, but I was with my kids. So, you know, there was time restrictions because obviously, with most of this stuff being retro, they kind of got bored. So I left the kids at home today. They've gone out with their mum doing their own thing, so I've got plenty, plenty of time. So these are really, really cool um, cases for all of your items and stuff like that, you know, protective cases, really good stuff. Now how cool is that Mr. T, or A Team rather, wristband watch? I contemplated buying that on a number of occasions, but yeah, um, I, I, I chose to keep the small amount of credibility that I have left in my family house. We've got Mr. Rich King Retro here, you're absent. <laughs> nice little cameo from Rich King Retro there. He had his own stall, absolutely some fantastic PS2 games on his stall. And I have to apologise, mate, for um, putting you on the spot there, asking you why you don't do YouTube anymore. Um, really nice to see you. And uh, yeah, let's hope you come back to YouTube at some point. For those that don't know, Rich King Retro, um, he used to do the boot hunt videos, car boots, and all that sort of stuff, uh, similar kind of to what I do now. Um, but he was one of the first people I watched that used to do it. So yeah, kudos to you, mate. Now I was in the market for some hardware today, and this is a thing of beauty. Absolutely gorgeous 360 here. You'll have to see the pickups video to see if I collected it. Nice, uh, really cool WCW handheld there. Not sure if it's a Tiger one, but it's definitely influenced by that kind of Tiger handheld game. Got one of the heavy hitters on the PS2 there. You got Manhunt 2. Now I thought these are really good value. I do like them uh, N64. Retro Monkey Game in there. We're selling that Battlefield 3. Really good stall and uh, we'll get to them a little bit more in my pickups video. And there is the dreaded UFOs made famous on the internet by the angry video game nerd. Now, looking at things like this uh, always bring back massive nostalgia for me. There's one of my favourite games in the 8-bit era, Target Renegade.
Ninja Warriors there on uh, Super Nintendo. That is um, an American version, I believe, but still, £350. That's a rare one. Lots of Nintendo cardboard was uh, available on this day. Loads of stores were selling it. But I will say, anything Nintendo that was boxed, wow. The prices were really premium today. Some people moan about these kind of markets and they say that the prices are, you know, inflated. And in some cases, I would agree. But... You know, on the flip side of that, there's always uh, good deals in these markets as well if you really, really hunt around. And, you know, um, I think the store holders expect a certain amount of uh, R2 and you know, you to get the deals. They, they kind of know this. Although I will say it was a little bit more difficult this time around. Now, has anyone ever gone for these mystery bags? I'm uh, a little bit too reluctant to go for them. I did like the Five Nights at Freddy's bits there though. A game I've been playing a little bit recently on my uh, Switch Lite and um, I went from not knowing what the hell I was doing on it to quite enjoying it and I'm still terrible at it. But yeah, it's actually quite a fun little game to play for a while. Now oddly, I went out of the house today looking for these kind of things drink coasters. With a new gaming area that I've just set up, the furniture um, really does need these kind of things so I don't have my drinks um, lying around. So yeah, inevitably I picked up at least one of these today. Um, I got the Super Mario, um, Super Mario Land one. At £3, I thought that was really good value for a market. Now that's a classic, the old Konami Blades of Steel. I can remember that from your Argos catalogs and your Freeman's catalogs and stuff like that in the 90s. Nice to see some Atari getting some love here. Box stuff as well. And I've never seen Atari Double Dragon in the flesh. Really cool to see. Nice to see some uh, VHS stuff there. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole though of collecting VHS. <laughs> so for those that don't know, that was a toy called Rude Ralph. I had one of those in the late 80s, possibly the early 90s. Um, they were just at every sort of little toy shop at the time. And interestingly that guy told me it's so rare that it goes for about 100 pound now because i was interested at one point nice hat there love to see people getting dressed up for the occasion it makes the event anyway back to rude ralph i wasn't interested once i heard the 100 pound price tag some fantastic handhelds here today and that blue Super Mario one was one that I had as a child, quite nostalgic. The guy offered me a great deal for it, but I did turn it down in the end, uh, just due to the fact that I wanted to spend my money on something a little bit more that I'd get um, use out of today. Now, I went to the market today, really, really considering one of these uh, modded Game Boys today. Um, I wouldn't say they're not worth the money. They're £189. There's a lot of work that goes into these. But yeah, um, I did turn it down today. Um, I will buy one eventually, but it wasn't to be today. There was definitely some good, good deals on consoles that I was looking out for. Um, I'm after a Saturn, you know, potentially an Xbox OG uh, to basically replace the one I've got the trays appears to be knackered and um, a Dreamcast so I was kind of looking out for those sort of items today if I could get a deal that I was happy with
Now that is a true classic. The big game from Grandstand. So this store in the back area of the market, there's two areas if you haven't been before. One is the main kind of arena and then you've got room two. Room two is just as good. Sometimes it's great to browse in the second room because it does tend to be less busy. So you can get in there and have a look. And this stall was set in some uh, really good control pads here, uh, the fighters ones. And I was going to pick one of them up today if I was fortunate enough to find a Dreamcast that um, was going to come home with me. So yeah, keep it tuned for the pickups video to see if I did pick one of these up. How are we doing, Mr. Ed Hunt today? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, filming? I thought you. Were... <laughs> I was taking a photo. Yeah, man. I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Just here, setting my game, setting my ways. Do you know what I mean? What's your channel, man? Uh, we just random gaming. Just said it yourself, big up yourself. Nice one, brother. I look forward to looking at your video later. All right, nice. Yeah, big up the Ed Hunts there. Again, I think it was a habit of the day for me. Anyone that I talked to and I was filming, I put them on the spot. <laughs> Sorry, fella. Anyway, nice to have uh, met you properly. The few times I have spoke to you, always a friendly guy. Check his channel out, Ed Hunts. I'll leave a link in the description below. But yeah, he's uh, really, really good. Um, it always sells some good stuff, Mr. Hunts, and um, it was no different on this occasion. His store was really good, as always. Some really cool arcade style backdrops here, um, which you could pretty much do with every, whatever you want. If you've got um, some replica arcade machines and cabinets, then of course you could put them on there. Alternatively, put them anywhere you want in your gaming area. Now this kind of reminds me of my uh, local game store when I was growing up. That's how, this is in some way, how they displayed their cassette games. So it was nice to see that. Not sure if it was intentional or not, but yeah, it definitely hit the nostalgia point. Now, I've said it time and time again, I do not like the Sega Master System 2. I think the Master System 1 is brilliant, apart from the fact it doesn't have... Uh, or it does have the pause button on the console, which is dark. But the second one just really does uh, creep into toy territory. I was very tempted by that Famicom there, reasonably priced at about £120. I've never owned a Famicom, and I'm not gonna go down that wrestling figure rabbit hole. Uh, the Hasbros, I recently sold at least, I don't know, I must have had about 60 to 70 Hasbros in my collection, recently got rid of them due to uh, lack of space. But as you can see, £40 for a Mega Drive there. And the Mega Drive 2 I saw was going for around about £30. So some really good deals on consoles. I definitely need to pick up some more GameCube games and I was looking around today to be honest with you. Uh, I couldn't find that much that was... Uh, I wouldn't say that I didn't want because there's lots of games I want but again with it being Nintendo it does have that premium attached to it every time. I am looking for deals. Uh, I'm not looking to be paying uh, crazy prices. Um, Call me tight if you want. I think a lot of us gamers and collectors have got that mentality, so I'll stick with it. So 
So this one is a Dorkway, sorry, Doorway to Dorkness, Dorkway. Is that even a word? Doorway to Dorkness, uh, I've seen their shop many times on various channels, primarily the Retro Ghetto, and they do have a fantastic shop. One that I do plan on going to and doing a uh, visit soon. But yeah, it's a distance, so I'm gonna have to plan that one out. And what on earth is that game with a foot on it? So this store was selling primarily Japanese stuff. A lot I was tempted by, but um, I don't have the facilities to play Japanese PS2 games currently. Now this lady was selling some really, really nice pieces of art here. The bubble bobble piece in particular, I was eyeing up. Uh, at £35, I thought it was quite reasonable. I just don't think my uh, wife would have appreciated Bub and Bob taking centre stage in the living room. Now, one of the things I love about these markets, if you're a collector of disc-based stuff like the original Xbox, the PlayStation 2, the Wii, uh, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, you can bulk up your collections and, and do it at a really, really reasonable price. Currently, the games for these systems in that generation are in transition. A lot of them are going up within the UK, PS2 especially. But they're still at the moment, they are in transition and you can still get some fantastic games at brilliant prices. I've always loved the original Famicom carts. They look great, I love the color schemes and so much better than what we got over here in Europe and what the Americans did with those big grey things. I know they're nostalgic, I know, you know, it's kind of a... It, it, you know, people love the NES cartridge, but when you could really break it down, the Famicom carts were a lot better, weren't they? Now look, there's a real master system. So yeah, a Saturn and a Dreamcast both next to each other there. Two of the systems that I want and um, definitely considering buying one of them today. Lots of golden eyes. Right, 
Right, anyway, guys, that was the London Gaming Market, 17th of March, 2024. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you haven't already, give us a sub. Um, it's much appreciated. It helps the channel out massively. There will be a second part to this video on Sunday, primarily showing you the pickups. So I've decided this week to get the actual hunt video out and about a little bit earlier than usual so that I can put out on Sunday the video showing you what I picked up. In the meantime, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one. Take care.